And who am I? That's not a secret I'll never tell. You know you love me. XOXO. Gossip Girl. What the? We got Gossip Girl. Season 2, Episode 17, Carnal Knowledge. This episode starts off after the events of Night of the... After the events of the... After the events of the opera. Blair is sentenced to Queen of Central Park before school, and she supervises the icon... As she supervises icon Dorota to do the cleaning, while she calls Serena to vent about the tension. Serena tries to see it from both Blair and Rachel's side before hanging up to bring Rachel an essay at the cafe where she has breakfast. After they hang up, Harold shows up at the park with Hanson, with Blair's dog Hanson. She she brings he brings Blair and Dora, an icon Dora a picnic breakfast and tells Blair that he's proud of her for accepting her punishment with grace. She accepts the compliment and thanks him. Meanwhile, Serena arrives at the cafe where Rachel is and finds her sitting there with <gasps> Dan. They have an awkward interaction before Dan leaves to go to school. Once he's gone, Rachel mentions how wonderful place, piece of writing he did. Feeling slighted, Serena asks her for more time on her essay, which Rachel grants. Also, Chuck wakes up in a mysterious bedroom. He gets up and goes to the bathroom when he notices a strange tattoo on his arm while washing his hands. He has flashbacks to tons of beautiful women dressed up and wearing masks. He remembers one particular woman who he may have slept with. He calls Nate to ask if they spoke the night before. When Nate says no, Chuck says that night before was also one of the greatest nights of his life. While he looks over a card with a date, time and address inscribed on it. Inscribed. He tells Nate to write down the address on the card and have him and Vanessa meet there at Constance. Harold tells Rachel that she finished her week of detention. Afterwards, she tries to recruit her minions into gay, helping her take Rachel down. However, the minions are not interested due to not wanting to get detention as well. Blair tries to give them an inspirational speech, but the minions are still unmoved. Jean Mac, John Mac, John Maxwell's head and Mrs. Queller, again, have to call her that because don't want to confuse her with the other one. John Maxwell's head Mistress Queller says that appears announces that the school has a new policy that bans cell phone use during the day. She informs them that at the beginning of each day, each student should return in their phone and they will receive it back at the end of the day. The girls are shocked and decide and decide that now they'll basically follow Blair's plan. Plan. They'll basically yeah they realize that now yeah now they're basically on Blair's side as they realize that yeah. Rachel, Rachel Carr was the one to, to, to it was Rachel's, I, it was, it was Rachel Carr who, ha, who's the, it was Rachel Carr's idea. So they decide that, yeah, helping, getting Blair detention, they don't care about, but taking away their phones, that's, that's personal to them, and they're not going to help Blair take her down. After they check their phones, the girls go to the bathroom and hang out. I come to Rhoda. Arrives soon and coverly brings Blair a bag of full of phones. She thanks the icon and hands them all out. Ordering the girls to dig deep into Rachel's packs to find anything to take her down. Elsewhere, Nate and, Nate and Vanessa meet with Chuck at the, at the address he gave them. He tells them that he received the card with a date, time, and an address when he arrived. He found a he found a private gentleman's club waiting for him, along with the most beautiful woman he's ever seen, ready to pleasure him. However, it didn't go very well for him, and he woke up alone in the hotel room. The answer asked Steve that they can, if they can find anything clues to what happened. Back at Constance, the minions are unable to fin find anything scandalous about Rachel. Blair instructs them to make make something up and leave the bathroom. Once she's at time, she sees Dan awkwardly trying to com compliment Rachel. She sees the brewing counter she between them and decides to take and decides to yeah, basically get she sees them buddying up and decides she sees the 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 chemistry of love building between them and decides to and decides to take matters into her own hands about this by saying a tip into gossip girl about them. 
Later that afternoon, a guy that seems to current congratulate Dan. He doesn't know why and, t and tells Jane that his day has been weird. She takes the opportunity to show him that gospel was headlined by him and Rachel that she wrote down her arm due to not having a cell phone. He's shocked by the rumor and tells her it's absurd. Jane then spots Serena entering the courtyard and wishes on what on convincing Serena that it isn't true. Serena comes over and asks if it's true. He swears it isn't and that she believes him. Dan wonders Dan wonders Dan wonders who could have sent in a mean rumor about Rachel, and Serena explains that Blair got got trashed to you because of Rachel. So Meanwhile Chuck Meanwhile Chuck wonders the how wonders the that house but finds nothing of interest. However, he he's absolutely sure this is the place where he was. Chuck then spots a photo of a woman holding a baby that's sitting on a grand piano. He tells them that that is the woman, and Vanessa wonders if it's the mom. Vanessa says there's only one way to find out and shows Chuck a flyer for the house, which is for sale. Back at Constant, Dan confronts Blair about starting a Dan confronts Blair about starting the starting that the, the rumor about him and him and Rachel Carr. She plays dumb, saying, Oh, Dan, I have no idea what you're talking about. Outside, Serena gives Rachel her essay and admits that she didn't turn it in earlier because she was embarrassed by not being as confident with her writing as Dan is. Rachel t tells Serena that Dan is confident because he's been praised and encouraged all his life. Serena tells Rachel about the rumor and in Gossip Girl. She explains how people will send tips to Gossip Girl and will, she will spread and she will spread them anonymously. Serena walks away to go to class and when she's gone, Dan asks Rachel if she has a minute to talk. Back at the house, back at that house, I'm gonna call it that house, not the house, that house. Chuck takes a tour of the house with 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 a selling real estate agent to talk about the photo of the woman and the baby. She explains that that is the nanny. They pause in the dining room, and Chuck asks if he can have a private number of the previous owner to talk about specific details related to the house. The agent is wary at first until Chuck bribes her with his connections in the real in the reality world. She replies that she can't be unprofessional, but leaves the folder behind on purpose with the owner's contact information. While she gets them some bottled water, she leaves the room. Chuck. Then Aston speaks with Nanny, but, but when a man answers, the man replies that the Nanny L is, or Ellie, I think it's L, is with the with with the children at the park. Chuck leaves his number and asks for her to call him back. Up Constance Blair's with Jan Maxwell's head Mrs. Queller's office for a meeting. When she walks in, she's shocked to see Rachel in there with Gossip Girl pulled up on the computer. John Maxwell's head Mrs. Queller says that they know that Blair sent in the tip. Blair insists that she did it. But Rachel says that they have a witness. The secretary sends in Nellie, who explains that to Blair that she has to go to Yale, and it was either Blair's record or her own. She finishes by because I could be like, oh, that Nellie, how dare you? Blair did everything for you. But knowing who Blair is, I kind of agree with Nellie on this one. I would agree with Blair, but knowing who Nell, knowing who Blair is, of course Nellie would choose her own, choose her future over Blair's because yeah, Blair treats Nellie horribly. I know I've said that I don't know what the point of Nellie's character is, and I still don't. She kind of doesn't serve as a really good character, and she doesn't. She kind of just is there. But I agree with her. Like literally, of course she would choose her future over Blair's because yeah. She would choose her her getting accepting oh. Of course she would choose Blair's ra her record over Blair. She finishes by saying that they tried to warn her but she was but that she would be caught, but she wouldn't listen. John Maxwell's head Mr. Quellers then tells Blair that she has no other option but to expel her from Constance. The next day Blair tells Harold that her acceptance and he'll be revoked once they hear what happened. He asks her did she start the rumor, and she says that anything she posts was the absolute truth. Harold says it's clear Rachel was has been out to get her from the start, and that he will inform her that he has that he's going to have his lawyers fight the expulsion. 
At the gallery, Rufus tells Dan and Vanessa that he and all the other parents are called for an emergency parent council meeting. He also says that Dan's the subject of the meeting and asks if there's anything they need to talk about. Meanwhile, Nate sends Vanessa a car card similar to Chuck and a mask. She excuses herself to put it away, and Dan tells Rufus that nothing's going on between him and Rachel Carr, but nothing's more. But it says, but doesn't say anything more about it. In the park, Serena meets with Rachel and asks her to reconsider having Blair expelled because it will ruin her entire future. Rachel replies that Blair is getting what she deserves by, by posting some slanderous rumors and refuses to look the other way. She excuses herself to do something before to do something before the parent teacher council, council meeting and leaves. Once she's gone, Serena calls Blair and says that Rachel is refusing to bug. Rachel calls the icon Dorota to give her dog handsome away. Serena tells her to hang in there and she notices Rachel left her planner. She, she looks inside and decides to meet Rachel at her apartment to return it. At Constance, Lily, Rufus, and Harold arrive for the meeting. Harold explains that he's here to advocate for Blair's behalf and introduces himself to Rufus. Rufus replies that he's here to make sure no one is slandered like Dan was by Blair, introduces himself. Back at the house, Chuck calls Nate and informs him that he was he knows who the work woman is, who who uh, the woman L is. He lies saying that he's waiting for his chiropractor and Nate tells him to call the next day. After they hang up, L shows up but holding candlestick. You know holding a candlestick. Meanwhile Dan has coffee with Rachel in a minute restaurant. She feel, she says she feels insulted by the rumor and begins to tear up. She wants to take he he leans in and and tucks a lock of hair behind her ear and she doesn't play it. However, unknown to them, Serena sees them from outside and takes a photo before walking away. Quickly, inside Rufus pulls away from what Serena didn't see was was she what Serena didn't see what Serena walked away from before seeing was Rachel pull away from Dan and and he apologizes. Back at the house back at the back at that house, Al tells Chuck that the invitation was meant for Bart and she sent it without realizing Bart was dead. When Chuck showed up, she realized her mistake, so she drugged him to get him out of there with no memory of what has happened. He asked to know who the group was and she alerts the powerful woman in America. She tells him to stop looking for answers and not to contact her again. At the Ultra Ball, Vanessa arrives with the mask and card and goes inside for a, a scandalous night with Nate. At the Waldorf, Serena shows Blair the photo she took of Dan and Rachel. Blair is sorry since Dan is Serena's boyfriend, but says that they have to get to that parent teacher parent council meeting right away. She orders the icon Dora to get her do to get handsome back and leaves the Serena. On, on the way out, Serena texts Dan to meet her at Constance right away. At Constance, Harold argues that the internet censorship is freedom of speech and use. The parents debate the having the, on having gospel world shut down. As they talk, Blair runs in and tells him John Maxwell's head was just quelled to check her email. She does, and the producer shows a photo of Dan and Rachel together to everyone there. Serena's inside and tells and Serena tells Dan that she saw him and Rachel took a, and took a photo, which Blair is showing everyone. The meeting lets out and Rufus emerged. Dan shouts out the rumor is not true, but Rufus d disgusted that his son is supposed he j upset that his son is in a relationship is in a supposed relationship with a teacher. Walks and walks away, saying they'll talk at home. Rachel also comes out and she tells Dan and Serena that she was that that John Maxwell had mission caller. The school fired her. Blair comes over and says that's not 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 only is she back in Constance, but she saved Gossip Girl. Dan Dan angry says you Blair used that photo to back up a lie. She replies that she was only early program. Harold overhears and shocked that Blair made the whole thing up. She apologizes. Wait. Yeah. So yeah. She says that she was just being early pro pro pro. pro Poeg and Harold overhears and 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 shocked to hear that Blair made the whole thing up about Rachel. He tries, she tries to apologize, but he says he's going home. Blair and Serena go outside and he asks why she went after Rachel. She admits she felt like a fool and believed the worst because a part of her wanted to. They talk and 
of course, break up. They decide, they, they talk and decide, yeah, they don't want to be together. So the last two episodes were pointless. Wait, no, yeah, wait, no. This is episode, they got back in episode 14, 15, 16. Yeah, the last three episodes were pointless. Why did they have to break? They broke her, they had her in a breakup so she and Dan could last three, four episodes together before breaking up once again. Good job, show. You actually took an actual interesting boyfriend for Serena, made her break up the off screen, and then you basically made her and Dan's relationship feel like nothing. Because she breaks up with him, and it's like, so what was the point of all this? What was the point of removing Anna from the series if, if... I should really read the Gossip Girl books, because at least they do them just as they are. At least him and Serena breaking up in the books is more reasonable... And here it's just so, oh, we can have Dan and Serena get back together. Oh, wait, no, we're not. They, we, Oh, wait, no, we're not. We want him to have this thing where he kind of likes a teacher. And then that, and then, but he doesn't. And then Serena gets jealous. So that makes them break up. It's like, these writers do not know what they want to do with these characters sometimes. It feels like these writers don't, know, again, it feels like these writers just write. They don't know what to do with these characters. Yeah, they break up saying that it's too much has come between them and they hug and let go and let it go. Next day, Rufus says he heard that Dan and Serena broke up. He asked Rufus, he asked Dan if he's okay, and Dan says he is. He asked what happened in the meeting with Rufus. Rufus confesses after the photo came out. After the photo, after, after the photo came out, Rachel's fate was sealed. Dan says that he messed up not Rachel and he should be punished. He figures out that Rufus voted for to fire her, but Rufus surprised that he only did so to protect Dan's future. Angry Dan gets up wait, wait. Angry Dan gets up and says that Rachel should not be fired and he should be the one to be punished. And he leaves. At the, at Rachel, Serena brings her her new plan. Her plan. She misses giving the photo to Blair, and Rachel gives her back her essay. She says it was wonderful, but then says it's best if Serena le leaves her apartment. At the Waldorf, Blair is preparing to send Handsome back to Paris with Harold and Ramon. However, Harold says that he should keep the dog. She can keep Handsome, and tells Blair that he's worried about her. He says that he's disappointed in her for not for for allowing him to defend a lie. She reasons that Yale was online, and she has to go there. Same as he did. He could say he doesn't care about what college she goes to so much as what what kind of person she turns out to be. He offers to have Icon, Dorota, pack a picnic for them to eat on the way to the airport. But, but Harold says that sh they should say goodbye then. He kisses her, her head and leaves, saying that they both have a lot to think about. At, at the Vander Woods Inn, Chuck opens Bart's safe and finds a whole collection of cards like the one he received. He wonders a lot of what Bart was was involved in as he sifts through them. He then receives a call from Alan Phillips, the owner of the house and Ellie's employer. Alan explains that Ellie never returned home to them and they're worried about her. He asks Chuck to call if he hears from her. We never get this plot point ever again, so we never hear from Ellie. Chuck never looks into this ever again, so yeah. I guess, I guess they found her off screen. We never, this is not a plot point. So, I don't know. Why did they get us to invest into this Ellie girl if they're not Ellie character and what, and what her disappearance means if they're just going to drop it all together? That's suspicious, writers. At Rachel's, Dan arrives to apologize for the hug. However, she grabs him and makes out. He asks what he asks what she's doing, and she simply says she doesn't work. At, she doesn't teach at conference anymore. Means that they can't. That means that they don't have nothing to stop them from being a couple. But unknowns to them. But unknowns to both of them. John Maxwell's head Mrs. Queller gets together. Get together, visit to tell Rufus, Rufus and Lily that the board directors have decided that they don't have enough sophistic, sophistic, sophistic evidence to fire 
to fire Rachel, and she will be allowed to resume her teaching duties. Uh, oh, Dan, you're kissing a girl. She thinks she's still fired, but nope. So this is technically Dan that she should go to jail for this because she's dating a minor. Of course, she thinks that she doesn't work there anymore, but still, he's a 17-year-old boy. Look what happened to Danny and the Fosters. Look what happened to Danny. She's, I guess in the show, in the Fosters, she knowingly set up with Brandon. It wasn't like a, oh, they just happened to do it. She knew how, what, how old he was, but she just didn't do it. And she got herself sent to jail for it, which she deserved because it was terrible of her to manipulate him like that, get him drunk, and then sleep with him. But here, Dan's not drunk, of course, but still... It's still weird that, that like, I guess because she thought, oh, she was fired. Means that there's nothing to stop them from being together. But I'm um, to her. There was, she was not, they couldn't find any evidence to actually fire her. So, Dan, so. Meanwhile, meanwhile, Serena received a call from Dan where she apologized for everything he's and hopes that they can be okay. Back at Ra back at Rachel, it's revealed that Dan missed the call because he's sleeping with Rachel, of course, unknowingly that she just got her job back. I wonder how this is going to happen in the next episode. But, yeah. I wonder how this is going to result. But that's the end of the episode. So, I wonder how this is going to result. Next episode, we got Age of Dis Dissonance. Which is a, which was an episode about the guys about the guys starting in a school play while Dan and Rachel try to hide their feelings, try to hide their their ro romantic relationship from the school because of course she's got rehired. So so it's gonna be hard for Dan to keep his relationship with her while also pretending to be a student. So yeah, find out next time. But I'm back in. But find out next time. But. You know you love me, XOXO, Gossip Girl.